going to show you how to shade Venn diagrams. So in the first example, we have to shade A intersection B. So this symbol here means intersection. A just means set A, which is circle A, and B means set B, which is circle B, okay? So we have to shade the intersection of set A with set B, which is just the overlapping part here in the middle. Okay, so that's all you would have to do in the first example. Now, when the problems get a little bit more complicated, I think it's useful to associate the word and with the intersection symbol, okay? So the word and, it's easy to remember because the second letter here, the N, it looks like the intersection symbol. So we're shading what's in A and in B and it has to happen at the same time, okay? So it has to agree with both A and B. Okay, so the middle part in this question. In example two, it says to shade A union B. So this time the symbol's the other way up and it means union. Okay, so this time I would use the word or. Okay, so you're shading what's in A or in B. And it doesn't have to agree with both at the same time, like with the intersection symbol. So you can start shading straight away whenever it's union, set A, so everything in circle A, or everything in B, and then you would shade all of circle B, including that overlapping part. Okay, so there's number two. In number three, we have A with a little dash. This means the complement of A. So it means everything that's not in set A. So you, you would shade everything that's outside circle A. So everything outside circle A is everything around the outside of the circles, but also everything inside circle B up to, but not including, that overlapping part. Okay, because the overlapping part would fall inside set A, which can't be allowed, okay? In the next example, it says we have to shade the complement of A into section B. Now, remember I said to associate the intersection symbol with the word and. So we're shading the complement of A, so everything that's not in A. And, at the same time, it has to be in set B. Remember, it has to agree with both at the same time, okay? This is the strict symbol, the intersection. So if we're shading everything that's in set B, but not in set A, you would have to shade everything here on the right hand side, everything inside circle B, but not the overlapping part, because that part is in A. Okay, so there's that example. On number five, it says we have to shade A union the complement of B. Okay, so remember this is like the word or. So we're shading set A or everything that's outside of B. Okay, remember union is the flexible one, it's not strict. It doesn't have to agree with both at the same time. So you can start shading straight away everything inside circle A, including that overlapping part, it doesn't matter that it goes in B, and then everything that's outside circle B. So that would be everything outside the two circles. Okay, so it doesn't matter that I shaded that overlapping part and then it falls in B because it's union, okay? It doesn't have to agree with both at the same time. Now, in the next example, it says A union B, but then there's a dash outside the bracket, so it's like the complement of A union B. So I always think it's useful to ignore this for the moment and just imagine what that would look like if you were to shade it. A union B would look exactly like this one here. We did A union B at the beginning. So if we're doing the complement of that, you would shade the opposite of this. So everything that's not shaded here would be everything outside. In the next example, we have to shade the complement of A intersection B. So remember, when it looks like this, just ignore the little dash outside the complement part and imagine what it would look like if you were to shade A into section B. So that's like the very first example we did. So A into section B would be this part, the overlap of the two circles. But remember, the complement is everything outside of that. So if you're shading everything outside the overlapping part, you would shade everything in circle A up to but not including the overlap 
everything in circle B up to, and not including the overlap, and then everything outside the two circles. Okay, on the next ex example, we have three sets, A, B, and C, but it's exactly the same idea, okay? This time it's A intersection C, so we have to shade what's in A and in C, and remember, it has to be at the same time agreeing with both, okay? Because it's intersection, the strict one. So if it has to be a set A, and it has to be a set C, it would be the overlap of those two circles A and C. Okay, so you would shade all of that intersection there. Okay? In this example here, we have B intersection C in brackets, and then the intersection of the complement of A. So let's just think about what this means in words, okay? So it has to be in B and C at the same time. And at the same time, it cannot be in A. Okay, so that, that's what it means. So if we consider this part first, B intersection C. So the intersection of B and C would be the overlap of circle B and C, so this part. But remember, this is intersection and it cannot be in A at the same time. So you're considering the overlap of B and C. But instead of shading all of it, you cannot shade the part that overlaps with set A. So it's just this part here. So in the last example, it looks very similar to the last one. I've just switched this symbol here to union instead. So it says we have to shade B intersection C, union, and then the complement of A. Okay? So in words, it means we have to shade what's in B and C, or everything outside of A, okay? So remember, union is the flexible one. It means we can shade the intersection of B and C, and then afterwards, everything outside of circle A. And it doesn't have to agree with both sides at the same time. Okay, so let's start with this part first, okay? So B intersection C is everything in B and C, so the overlap of the circles B and C. So just that part there. Or everything outside of circle A. So everything outside of circle A, everything outside the circles, okay? And then you could also shade everything in circle B, but not this overlap here with A, and everything in circle C, but not this overlap with A. Okay, so it doesn't matter that we shaded this part in A at the beginning, Okay, because it was union. Okay, so you can do that part first, regardless of what this part says, and then afterwards you can shade everything that's outside set A.